So we're at Chesapeake Bay Environmental Center, and we're out here today with George Washington University, and they brought out their marine ecology class, and we're here with their professor. So Karen, what are we hoping to find today? Um, well, we put out these, these small crab collectors so that mud crabs would recruit into these boxes of oyster shells so that we could look for a parasite on these mud crabs that's called loxo. It's actually a barnacle parasite. Um, it doesn't look anything like a barnacle, mm. but it lives inside the crab and it reproduces there. It actually hijacks their reproductive biology and kind of has the crab help with its eggs. What made you pick this area to choose? Um, well, I love the access to the bay, mm -hmm. and they also have some oyster reef restorations here, and so we put out these crab collectors near to the oyster reef restoration and farther away uh, to the, stu the students are asking the question about how physical structure will affect all these prey items like the mud crabs. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're expecting to see more mud crabs near to the physical structure than in the unstructured soft sediment habitats. Okay. Um, so that's the hypothesis we're testing. We're also interested in what the density of those prey items, the mud crabs, does to the density of the parasite that we're looking at. Sit your, your crab collector in it, get some water in your um, bucket, and then you can cut open your crab collector and the outside mesh is just trash to keep the, um, to keep the oysters in while it's underwater. So you take that mesh off and then pull the oyster shells off one by one and kind of dip them in the water in your bucket and you'll get the organisms off and you can do a further inspection to see what's, what's remaining. And then you can sort through your oyster shells that way and you'll end up with all your organisms in your bucket. You can take them out one by one from the water and count an ID and check for loxo parasites too on the mud crabs. So you guys did a hypothesis, right? Mm -hmm. What did yeah. you guys expect to find? We expected to find more of the organisms near the oyster reef because mm -hmm. uh, the oysters are a foundation species, so we were expecting to see more diversity there. Yeah. Um, and that's where this collection is from. Okay. Yeah, they provide structures to the community in an otherwise barren um, environment. Cool. And these look like some smaller oysters that were growing on them. Yeah. Four of them here. We found a little shrimp. Um, so far, yeah, it's in our bucket. So far, that's all we've found. Um, but yeah, we just started, so hopefully we'll find some more stuff. Hopefully at the base yeah. of the oysters, we'll find some more, but yeah. Do you know how many baskets you guys put out all together? I think we had five at one site and then about five in the other. Yeah, yeah, cool. five at the oyster site and five at the soft sediment site. That is a uh, tube worm that builds on the outside of the shell. It's a, um, just a commensal species with oysters. I know it's very early on. They're going through their first batch. Yes. Have, you, have you seen anything to make you think this was a success? Well, we already lost a replicate. <laughs> <laughs> there was one less uh, crab collector out there than when I, I put them out two weeks ago. That's pretty standard. Uh, that's, uh, that's kind of a learning opportunity mm -hmm. for the students because uh, that happens in real field experiments. You, okay. lose, you, you lose replicates. Um, and I think we already had a good experience with uh, how it is to collect and take data on a marine ecology field experiment. Mm -hmm. So in that way, it's been a success. And we've already seen some, some neat organisms. We saw grass shrimp, mud crabs. We've already seen an infected mud crab, uh, amphipod. I'm um, sure we'll see a lot more diversity before the day is done. Well, that's good. You want to go back over and see what they found? Sounds good. Let's do it. 